Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Jack. And Jack is your travel companion when we're allowed to go traveling. And it obviously matches the little pouch there and also the backpack. You don't have to do that. It's just me. But um, she's very easy to make, or he's very easy to make. And you can see I've got my passports in there. Well, I live in hope. And then we've got the money in there as well. So there's, you've got the same either side. You've got two sort of pockets, if you like, either side. And you can see that they, they're not stitched down. So it means they're nice and easy to take things out. You could have your other documents in there. You'll need insurance documents and health documents and all those things. So it's nice to have them in one place. And then it just folds together. Now, I decided not to put a clasp on mine I wanted mine to be nice and open a nice wallet I mean you could put a ribbon around it you could you could put your own clasp on it personally I didn't want that I wanted it to be open like this it's quite nice it's such an easy make and it's nice isn't it to have a pattern that's really super easy and I'm sure you could adapt it for other things as well and I was thinking maybe in the center you could put a zippy purse you could attach a little zippy purse in there so lots of possibilities but that is Jack it's a downloadable pattern on my website lizzycurtis.com where all the measurements are there the pattern pieces are there uh, written instructions pictorial instructions instructions everything that you need and of course nice bit of fussy cutting going on back and front so you can see the butterflies so obviously you'll cut your pattern pieces as per the instructions and you'll you'll also um, stabilize them and I want to show you that so you can see that I've stabilized my piece there but it I haven't stabilised the, the side and the bottom piece by about a quarter of an inch. Um, on the outer piece here, um, if I can get it open, there we go. You can see it's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Um, I'm using a, just a regular quilting cotton weight. In the original one, this one, it's canvas. So of course you can use canvas, but try and keep some of the bulk out of these seam allowances here and it'll it'll make it sit nicer and it'll look a bit smarter. So all you're going to do is cut out your pattern pieces. I've already cut one side, so that's one side done and that'll go like that. And you just want to make sure that the stabilized piece is on the top and the lining is underneath. You can see that my lining and my pieces are the same fabric. You don't have to do that, but it's an option. So I've put my walking foot on because we're dealing with um, sort of layers like this. They do tend to sort of um, move around a bit. So I thought, I know I'll put my walking foot on. So right sides together. There we go. If I show it that way, you can see right sides together. There we go. And we're just going around from the side around the curve and down. We're not stitching anything else. So it's just the two sides, if you like, and continuously um, stitch along there about a quarter of an inch. And you're just going to make your way around that curve nice and gently. Um, the stitch length can be on but anything between two and two and a half. So you're just going to stitch around that curved edge there. So although I've said two sides, it's not really. So stitch length between two and two and a half. Just take it easy around that curve. P pivot with your needle if you need to. And just follow all the way around. Nice little back stitch just to finish that. Now with this, we're going to use our pinking shears and we're just going to cut the curved part. I'm not worrying about anything else, just the curved part. And if, we sh if I show you there at the side camera, you can see what that looks like. You can see I've just trimmed that little piece there with the pinking shears. So that can be turned around. So right sides are out, giving it a, a press, an iron, dry iron, and then a top stitch. So we'll do that in just a second. I'll do the second piece. Second piece is larger, but again, all we're doing is stitching around the curved part, not here and not here. So again, right sides together and quarter of an inch seam allowance, a little um, stitch. There we go. So between two and two and a half again. Just want to make sure those pieces were lined up. I didn't think they were, and they weren't. So I'm just making my way around slowly, lining up my bottom piece. Just 
and the walking foot really does help here so look there we are I'm just going to trim that piece I mean you can trim the whole thing you know I, I just think oh I only want that top little curve trimmed so that's what I've done see it better like that maybe so turn it through again what you've got to remember with this is that the part that is stabilized is the top and the lining goes underneath not easy to see with mine because I've used the same fabric but if you stick to that and that stabilized piece is really <laughs> there's my pinking cheers gone <laughs> the um the stabilized piece makes the top lovely and crispy now we are going to top stitch this so once you've given that a press and you're happy with how that looks then we're going to top stitch it really close to the edge about an eighth of an inch there we go so just keep an eye on what's your top and what's your lining especially because i've used as i said the same fabric and that's only because that the when we open this up when we open the actual wallet up you can see the inside can't you as well as the outside and i just wanted that to be the same i've used linen on mine it's rather lovely so again i'm going to stitch on the right side so i'm stitching on the top on the outer the part that stabilizes again take your time now we're doing a eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around you just want to take your time with that certainly with this sort of fabric it's quite busy it's not really going to see very much of your stitching but it really it really neatens it up it makes the edges of your pockets really sharp Just take your time through those curves. Keep pivoting if you need to. Don't think you have to do that in one, one sweep because you absolutely don't. Right, so just remembering that our right sides face up. So that's my right side there. So I've got kind of opposites going on here. So that's that one. That's it. Yep. That's it. So all I'm doing, <laughs> I need to do them the other way around, that way around, that way around. So if we look at the side camera, it'd be easier to see. So the curves, let's move it so you can see that. The curves go on the inside. So if we look at the original one, you'll see those curves are going on the inside. So there we are. If I move that, you'll be able to see that that's curved and that goes on the inside and the stabilised piece is on the top okay we're just making a sandwich there so you might want to trim those threads away um, so just bring in your clips just for a moment and just clip all those layers together okay do the same with this one so just bring all your edges together there we go you can see that quite nicely and again just slide your clips in just to hold them for a moment and we'll just clip those threads because nothing worse is there. You bet anything you like they'll come through to the to the right side. So all we're going to do now is stay stitch these together. So you're actually stay stitching. Oh, that fabric looks gorgeous. You're stay stitching down this edge here and across the bottom. That's all you're doing. These do not get stitched. They're left loose. OK, so you'll just stay stitching about an eighth of an inch in all the way up and just go beyond see where that top bit finishes just go beyond that just to hold that together so I'll just put that under the machine so because we've got about four layers going on that's why it's quite nice to have the walking foot I know sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to put on they kind of they have a mind of their own sometimes but it's worth it so there's one pair made, just about see the little pockets there. I love the fabric, but not so good for visibility. <laughs> just trim my threads a little bit. 
So again, you're stitching across the bottom, up to the corner, and then just beyond where that top pocket sits. And it's just bringing all those layers together so they don't wriggle, basically. So now you've got two pockets. It's kind of like a double pocket. Can you see how they look? Nice. So these are going to be attached to your lining and it's a definite shape. Do you see it's, well, it's a rectangle, it's not a square. So you want to make sure that you put your pockets on the longer edge. So if I, if I hold it there to the camera, you'll be able to see how that looks. That's how it looks. So if we put it the other way, well, they'll just about fit. <laughs> that just about fits, but that is not what you do. OK, so it's the longer edge. You want to have this gap. And the reason for that is, in fact, let's put the pockets the right way up. <laughs> and the reason for that, the reason why you've got that gap there is that when you have maybe two or three passports in there or documents in there, maybe you've got a whole wedge of money in there, it's going to add bulk. And so you still want to be able to fold your wallet and for that to sit nicely. OK, and that's why we have that gap there. So now what we want to do is stay stitch those to the lining. Um, you could do it at the same time as you put your pockets together, but I like to do things one thing at a time. That way it'll all go exactly where you want it to go. Nothing will wriggle, but by all means, you do it the way you want to do it. So again, now we're going to top stitch from the top of the pocket down. Take the clips out. As soon as I put them in, they come out, but it holds everything. So again, Have you ever wondered what the Gold Club is all about? So many people message me, what is the Gold Club? OK, simply it's my online sewing group, OK, mainly based on Facebook, where we, we have a bit of a natter every day. We do Facebook lives and make all sorts of things. But if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see a Join Gold tab on the top there. And all that means is that you click on that yeah, and you buy it. So if for five pounds, which in dollars is about six dollars thirty, depending on exchange rates and times, um, you will get three patterns every month. I know it's mad. If you look at the price of my patterns in the shop, generally they're now four ninety nine. The value of the Gold Club online membership at this point in time is just five pounds a month. So you're getting the three free patterns every month and they're all made by me, designed for you. Easy, moderate, fairly difficult. Then we have the Facebook to back that up all as well, the Facebook group. So we have a wonderful time in there. We're all great friends. So if you want to join a great online sewing community, join Liz's Gold Club. So again, just go from just beyond the top of that pocket, down to the bottom, down to that corner, line it all up, come straight across. I wouldn't bother stopping, I would just, just carry on. I'm going to keep that clip there just for a moment. And just, it's got to go over a little bit of a bump there. So you might want to just help it or use a seam jumper to help you lift over. I mean, there's not a huge amount of bulk. We haven't used any wadding, it's all stabiliser. The only bit, bit that's not stabilised is the, the lining. And that's the lining for the pockets and the lining of the fabric, the actual lining. So, good. So that is our pockets <laughs> attached to our lining. Oh, the rest is so easy. So right sides together with your outer piece like that. You can see I put my crease there just to remind me of how it's put together. Sometimes we all need help. So right sides together and you're going to leave the turning gap at the top. So the turning gap 
sits just at the top here okay not at the bottom too many layers too many layers to to do the turning gap there so what I do is I put a clip where I'm going to start and just check to make sure I'll turn it so it faces me just to make sure that you have kind of marked now I would do at least three and a half inches don't stint on that turning gap because it really does make a difference and I've got a little tip for you as well when we go to turn through and you're getting that turning gap looking gorgeous so just putting all my layers together so just check and make sure that you've got the top in the right place if I hold that like that you'll see that there's my pockets coming down here this is my top so I'm going to start from that yellow clip there quarter of an inch seam allowance and like I said before I've stabilized just up to the quarter inch mark it's just shy of the quarter inch mark so when we turn through there is no bulk on those seams which is lovely it makes a real difference so quarter of an inch all the way around and of course using the walking foot has helped with all those lovely layers together just keep an eye on your seam allowance again like I said and all of this will benefit from a really good steam press so just going over the bottom of the pockets there I can feel the machine sort of thinking about all that layers of fabric but it'll be fine your, your domestic machine will be perfectly fine with this okay um, I would hmm, I was going to say about I wouldn't bother use using wadding you could if you wanted to but I would kind of quilt it so it kind of makes it more a more firm quilted front um, right, let's leave a nice big turning gap um, but I mean it looked really pretty and I tell you what else you can do I was thinking about this earlier so I'm just snipping across my corners here not too close to the, the stitching um, you could put this under the embroidery machine and embroider the front you could put your initials on there you could put your family name on there you could do some applique that front piece is crying out for some decorative work so there's it stitched together you can see what it looks like on the lining and you can see what it looks like on the on the front I thought that was a pucker but it's not it's where the pockets go in and out so just turn it through and obviously the more um, that you use for stabilizing you know uh, like Decaville if you wanted to use that that's quite stiff even the light is quite stiff for this this is where it will take a moment to push all those layers out and also when you get to this stage I'm going to show you when you get to this stage if your pockets have ended up well, let's do it so it makes sense if your pockets have ended up on the outside all you need to do is turn them to the lining okay you haven't done anything wrong it's just that when you've turned through those pockets have decided to go one way and actually um, they want to go another way <laughs> so something to turn the pockets or the points and because we haven't stabilized those points they're, they're really nice and neat be very careful that you don't use anything too sharp and it, it kind of makes a hole all that work so just be careful take your time no rush so push those corners out there we go so that is it in a sense made okay <laughs> he's a good press now before we do that I meant to do this before we turned it through I'll turn it through because this is this is quite a good neat, neat little trick I'm going to show you and it's always one of those things you remember oh I meant to show you this so let's just turn that through there's no loss such a such a nice easy make it's quite pleasant okay so let's push this out let's get back to where we were so if you remember a moment ago we had stitched all the way around so I'm just going to give this a little press I 
Okay, so. So now we've stitched all around. What I want you to do is to fold back your quarter inch seam allowance where your turning gap is. So fold it back and press it. So start a little way beyond your gap. So let's say an inch from the corner and just fold that piece across, making it nice and straight. So it looks like that. And then do the same on your lining. So you're folding it back on the stitch seam, pulling it, straightening it and ironing it down. Okay, so it looks like that. So when you turn through, you've already got your turning gap ironed in and it's perfect. So let's turn it through. So like I say, this is this is where if you've used Wadding or Decaville or anything like that, that's more, um, you know, it has more substance to it, then don't forget, it might take a little bit more of an effort to turn through. I've just used medium weight stabiliser as I usually do. And also don't forget, if your pockets end up on the right side, that's okay. Just turn them back on themselves. It's nothing that you've done wrong. Nothing at all. I remember the first time I did that and I thought, oh no, I'll stitch them on wrong. And then I realised, oh no, I just have to turn them back on themselves. <laughs> you sort of panic all that stitching that you've done. Okay, so there is our pouch completed. It needs an iron. So let me just give that, I'm going to bring my bigger mat up. Ooh, ooh crash, 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 bang. Now, of course, what you could do is top stitch all the way around. Just be careful of the corners where you've got all that bulk. So you might want to top stitch. Well, I think the maximum is going to be eighth of an inch. Um, I can't remember what I did with this one. No, I didn't top stitch this one. But just be aware of those corners because there's an awful lot of fabric going on there and your machine may struggle going through those corners. But you don't want to cut off too much of the width and depth of your pocket by top stitching. So just be aware of that. There we go. Oh, looking gorgeous. And from the back. Now I would ladder stitch this close. If you're not going to top stitch all the way around, I mean by all means just top stitch across the top here. Just do that. Um, or I think I would ladder stitch. I ladder stitched the one that I made previously. Or glue it. Nobody's going to tell you off. So there we are. So there's our second one made. So if I transfer my documents, my passport, oh, holidays, sunshine. <laughs> there we are. And let me hold it so you can see it. There you go. Looks nice, doesn't it? I think my passport slipped on this side. There we go. <laughs> but I do want it. I didn't want to close these pockets up. I wanted a, that sort of quick access of having those pockets open. And then, of course, when you close it, it sits absolutely perfectly. Look, look at that. It's very glamorous, isn't it? And obviously, I need to stitch my turning gap. But it sits really lovely. And that's because you've got that extra fabric in the centre there, the gap, if you like. Let me try and hold this up again. <laughs> so you've got that gap in the centre there. So when you fold it, there's masses of room to take. I mean, that would take another couple of passports and a load of money. Yes. Holidays. So there we are. So that is Jack. And Jack is the perfect travel companion with the backpack and the pouch. So this, the pouch is called Janet. The backpack is called Jenny and the travel wallet is Jack, J-A-C. So this is a download on my website, lizzycurtis.com and I hope you make loads. <laughs>